Over the years of playing on Minecraft Bedrock Edition, I have amassed a huge list of different Bedrock Edition bugs, glitches, and exploits that I've either discovered on my own or that you guys have sent to me. As you can see, it is a literally huge list. I have no idea how many entries there are, and I really don't care to count. These are all the bugs that I have yet to cover in the 89 episodes of the Bug Rock series. There's an entire other list, a huge list of bugs that we have covered already. And in today's video, we're going to randomly select a bunch of different items from that list and cover them and see what's up with them. I have no idea how many things we're going to cover today, but as many as I darn well please. Anyway, welcome back to another episode of Bug Rock of the Week. My name is Silent, and this is X number of bugs that you probably didn't know about. Oh yeah, as always, all of the bug report links will be down in the description of the video. If you want to add any additional information to them, or upvote them, or whatever, all the reports are down there for your convenience. Of course, any additional information on the bug reports significantly helps the developers get these things fixed in future updates. First up, we have a new way of making ghost water. This is something that's been around many many different times in many different updates of bedrock edition as you can see it is a floating water source it does not disappear when you update it and of course you can kind of swim in it but not really so this water is only actually here for me i can't actually like drown in this and if we re-log or leave the game and rejoin this water is going to disappear so it doesn't actually exist and I'm pretty sure only I can see this. So if there's another player in the world, they'll just kind of see a bobbing up and down and water that doesn't exist. Very creepy. <laughs> the interesting thing about this bug is that it only works in one specific way. So what you need to do is put down a flower pot and then you can put pretty much anything inside of that flower pot. But the important thing here is you have to waterlog it by clicking directly on the flower pot. If you click anywhere else in the block area, like on top of this glass, it's not going to work. You got to click on the flower pot the thing inside the flower pot will pop off as an item if we break that flower pot it is going to remove the ghost water and then we will have to do this again what you need to do is remove the block underneath the flower pot to make the flower pot pop off as an item and now you have yourself some ghost water pretty interesting stuff as you can see if we click on the area surrounding the flower pot with water it is not going to work next up we have an interesting one with enchantment books acting like they are the thing that's actually enchanted so first of all you can use fire aspect books to light tnt as you can see we just right clicked on it with a fire aspect 2 book and that lit the tnt that's because you can click on tnt with a fire aspect sword and that'll actually light it as well that is an intended feature but the enchantment books themselves should not be able to light it now this also happens with a couple other enchantment books as well so for example this happens with looting i made myself a looting 255 enchantment book using world edit just to demonstrate this as you can see if we spawn in a creeper punch him with this looting 255 book we're gonna get a lot of gunpowder proving that looting actually does work with this bug as well sadly it does not work with a silk touch so if we build up a little pillar and then go into survival mode and break it with a silk touch book we do not get the blocks back so you can't really use that one i was kind of hoping that we could this bug was on java with the silk touch at one point but it is not on a bedrock edition this probably happens with other enchantment books in the game, but there's like a million different enchantment books, so I don't really want to go through all of them and test them. Thank you, bye. Next, we have a really, really important bug having to do with input delay on Windows 10 devices running Bedrock Edition. This is a really difficult one to demonstrate via video, but basically whenever you like move your mouse to the right, there is some delay from when you move your mouse to when the cursor or the player moves in game. I had this massively yesterday like it happened with basically all of the keys on the keyboard so like I could be walking forward stop pressing the buttons right about here and then I would continue walking forward and fall off that cliff and then you know basically just fall I it was some seriously bad input delay but it's a pretty big issue on a bedrock edition on Windows 10 devices and it's a really really important thing to get fixed in these future updates next up we have a very fun bug with scaffolding that prevents you from taking fall damage Damage until you get to the top of the scaffolding so basically what you need to do for this one is jump off of a cliff onto some scaffolding but hold jump 
That way you like instantly start going up the scaffolding. So we're gonna jump off, hold jump. As you can see, we're going up. And then once we get to the top, we take some fall damage. This is easier to demonstrate if we fall further down. So like to here, as you can see, we took no fall damage. And then as soon as we get to the top, bam, massive amount of fall damage. Really, really interesting bug. And now for a demonstration without regeneration, we're gonna fall really far down. <laughs> Basically all the way to the ground. And then we'll probably die once we get to the top of this because fall damage. Yeah, as you can see, nine hearts. And that is a very, very interesting bug. Also, if you never reach the top of the scaffolding, then you never actually take the fall damage. As you can see, we're all the way as far as we can go, but we're not going to take the fall damage until we either hop to there or go down. Next up, we have a pretty small, mildly interesting bug for those of you who want some additional details or just want to mess around in Minecraft. So farmland can actually have some additional things above it that it shouldn't. So for example, if you put leaves above farmland, it is going to stay farmland. Of course, you can't till dirt into farmland farmland if there's ever anything above it you have to have air above it and then till it into dirt and then you can put leaves back above it now what you can actually do is uh you know actually place a farmland below some solid blocks and it stays a farmland too as soon as we update that then it realizes it shouldn't be farmland and it turns back into dirt of course for this you need the actual farmland block and you can only get that in creative so pretty small minor bugs if you remember a couple of updates ago you used to be able to look through slime blocks and honey blocks and the lava behind it would unrender and be invisible in theory allowing you to kind of find a little bit of ancient debris but let me show you a new bug that is significantly better using sideways chains as you can see the lava completely unrenders allowing you to look directly underneath of these lava oceans and this is a much better way of potentially finding a tiny bit of ancient debris it's not really that great but it's really easy to use all you need is a little bit of sideways chains and then you can just keep on placing them by looking in front of you and, and using the edge placing method and literally that's all there is to it really interesting stuff to make the lava unrender of course you still got to be careful not to uh <laughs> not to get caught on fire now as you can see if you place it incorrectly the lava will start to re-render again so of course you don't want that uh, it's a little bit buggy of course because it is a bug but it is something fascinating that you can do with these sideways chains. And this also works with water too. As you can see, the bottom water actually completely unrenders, allowing you to see the ocean floor in great detail. Right now I have night vision, so it won't naturally be that bright. But how you do this one is a little bit different than the lava. Of course, because sideways chains can be waterlogged, what you need to do is place some blocks in these areas like so, and then place some sideways chains inside of there and then remove all of the extra placeholder blocks and then the water below the chains will actually start to unrender kind of an interesting bug a new bug that's been brought to my attention is that sometimes snowy leaves in the world will have bright red textures basically they'll be bright red leaves i have not been able to reproduce this myself so there's a million different possible reasons why i might not have it working due to my devices or my drivers or my graphical settings or really you know a million different factors but you can see some screenshots on screen now and they look absolutely beautiful it's kind of like cherry blossom trees but bright neon red and these legitimately look pretty good I would love to have these in the nether actually we got another strange bug with dispensers as well I swear there's always something that I can do that's fun with dispensers anyway as you can see we got a full set of netherite armor in here if we just go ahead and flick this lever of course that is going to equip us with all of that netherite armor can you spot what is wrong with this image I'll give you three seconds. Okay, time's up. That wasn't three seconds, but you should have spotted it anyway. As you can see above the hearts, there is no armor rating. It doesn't tell us how much armor we are wearing or if we're wearing any armor at all. So if I wasn't looking in third person, I would have no idea that I had any armor on. Of course, if we look in third person, we got netherite. And as soon as we open up the inventory, that is going to update the hotbar and the game realizes that you are wearing full armor. Next up, we got like four 
different bugs with the Curse of Binding Pumpkins. So first of all, of course, they did actually do it correctly. You can't enchant the normal pumpkins or the jack-o'-lanterns. You can only enchant the carved pumpkins. This is something that was actually broken on Java Edition for like all of 1.13, if I remember correctly. So props to Bedrock Edition for getting that correct. However, as you can see, there is other issues with it. If we look in the inventory at the Curse of Binding Pumpkin, as you can see, the entire square of the item is actually enchanted, like the entire inventory square. If we pick it up, you can see that as well. There's actually an entire square of that enchantment glint around the pumpkin item. Not quite correct. If we hold it in our hand, as you can see, it's not actually glinting. Even if we look at ourselves in third person, unlike any other item in the game that's enchanted, it all has that glint if you hold it in your hand or throw it on the ground. So there is some issues with the glinty pumpkins and I am not happy about it. <laughs> and another bug of dispensers, you cannot actually equip these things to a player when you fire them from a dispenser. So if we power that dispenser, as you can see, it just goes to our hot bar. So you cannot automatically equip these to anybody like, you know, just putting it into the head slot. Also, it doesn't show up as enchanted on your head. I would like to see it be enchanted on my head. That would be cool. Also, you'll notice that it does not have the enchantment glint in the item frame. If you look through the mouth hole of the pumpkin, you can see that, uh, yeah, that pumpkin ain't enchanted, even though that is a curse of binding pumpkin. Furthermore, something I did not actually know about creative mode, you can take off curse of binding things and creative. Did not know that. That's kind of cool, actually. Next up, we have some very interesting and quirky behavior with redstone burnout clocks. If you're not familiar of the history of the burnout clock on Bedrock Edition, these didn't originally exist when Better Together came out. They had to specifically be added because the torches themselves just didn't function how burnouts originally, you know, are expected to function. So there's some kind of built-in quirkiness and weirdness with these circuits in general. Anyway, as you can see, this is an intentionally janky redstone line. So so if we place in a redstone torch, that is going to power itself, and then eventually it is going to burn out as expected. If we update this redstone torch in any way, it is going to, of course, relight and then continue the burnout cycle, and that is pretty much to be expected. Placing the block apparently doesn't update it, but you know what? That's just Bedrock Edition being difficult. Anyway, if we update this redstone line, we will see that the redstone torch will actually get updated as well. So placing some redstone there, there, or there, or really anywhere off of this does not update that line. However, breaking a single piece of this line that, you know, can power the block underneath the torch, that will update the torch, as you can see. Very interesting, extremely quirky and very interesting. We're not actually updating the torch at all. This redstone line is completely dead. There is no power going through this at all, but yet even if we break this redstone line, that still somehow updates the redstone torch magically. Quite interesting. So basically, Burnout clocks are weird, and they're also extremely unreliable. Sorry for using it in the tree farm. I'm never using these in a tutorial ever again. Of course, the one time that I use it in a tutorial, it's completely broken. Sorry, it's my bad. I, I would never use them again. There's also a little bit of a bug or just like kind of a mechanic exploit that you can do with drowns that are holding tridents. So if we throw this guy a Nautilus shell, you can see that he might pick it up. Mm, sometimes they can't always pick up items. It kind of depends on the drown. Sometimes they ain't so smart. Okay, here is a new drown. We're gonna throw this guy a Nautilus shell. As you can see, he picked up the Nautilus shell and he just dropped a trident. That is actually going to be a full durability trident, as you can see. So this is an excellent way of getting really good tridents from your zombies. Of course, not every drown that holds a trident can pick up items, but it's worth throwing them some Nautilus shells just to see if they can pick it up. And of course, keep in mind that a single drown can pick up multiple Nautilus the shells as you can see if we kill this guy he's gonna drop like a whole bunch of them because we threw him a whole bunch to pick up in the first place a very important bug to be on the lookout for and be aware of is that lava cauldrons do not care if you have fire resistance as you can see we have fire resistance two for like 17 minutes we're gonna go ahead and stand in this lava cauldron real quick if we actually can and as you can see the lava cauldron does not care at all it's gonna do a massive massive amount of damage to you 
you. Of course, we can go stand in normal lava, and that doesn't do anything to us at all. And also, the fire that you get from standing inside the lava cauldron also does not do any damage to you either. As you can see, we were on fire. We did not take any damage from that. It's purely the lava inside the cauldron that you need to be very, very aware of. And there you have it. That is a bunch of randomly selected bugs from my massive bug list. As you can see, there was actually some pretty good, interesting ones. I certainly had fun with today's video. Hopefully you did as well. If you got any ideas for different Bug Rock of the Week episodes that we should make, of course, let me know in the comment section down below. And as always, if you've ever found a Bedrock Edition bug, let me know what it is, either down in the comments on Discord or on Twitter. Always send me your bugs and they might make it into a video one day. Thank you to everyone who has sent me bugs over the years. Anyway, that's going to do it for today's episode of Bug Rock of the Week. I hope that you have greatly enjoyed. If you have, then of course, make sure to leave a like on the video. It significantly helps out the video and the channel a lot. If you're new here, consider subscribing so you don't miss future episodes. And otherwise, I'll see you guys down in the comment section and in the next one. And then there was silence.